Hi, my name is Randy White. Uh, I'll be demonstrating for you now the oropharyngeal airway, the nasopharyngeal airway, and the bag valve mask, um, and the ventilatory process. Uh, the first thing is, is, as we pan down here, we can see there's a lot of different things involved in airway and airway control. So we're going to talk about each one of these things in a different video, but we'll be doing, to, uh, just now, we'll be doing the oropharyngeal airway and the nasal pharyngeal airway along with the bag valve mask device. So I want to talk to you about a little bit about the bag valve mask device. The bag valve mask device is a self-expanding bag. It has the capability of being hooked up to oxygen. This reservoir needs to be continually filled so that when we squeeze the bag, this has a one-way valve at this side and a one-way valve at this side. Then the oxygen will be taken from this reservoir bag and fill this bag so we get near 100% oxygenation for this. The other thing is the mask. Uh, the mask has to be clear uh, at the top so you can see any vomitus or anything like that uh, that you have when you deal with airway control and it has to be very pliable for the mask. We're going to put these together like this very, very quickly and easily. Okay, and then this will actually rotate so you can go left or right side. Now, we're going to come back to the mask in just a second, and I want to talk to you about the oropharyngeal airway. The oropharyngeal airway is only used in the patient with no gag reflex. Uh, the problem is, is when you hit the gag reflex, reflex they will um, regurgitate and vomit, and then you'll have vomitus in your airway, and that's never a good thing. Okay, they come in different sizes, not necessarily different colors, but these particular brand is, and they come in different sizes, and we'll talk more about that. The nasopharyngeal airway comes in different sizes, it comes in different lengths, and it comes in different French, which is basically the diameter of the airway. You can use this in the patient with a gag reflex because of the fact that it doesn't touch the back of the pharynx and uh, cause the patient to vomit. So we're going to move down here to our mannequin and we are going to place the oropharyngeal airway. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that our patient, we have BSI and then we want to make sure that our patient is breathing, has a heart rate. So we're going to approach the patient and we're going to shake and shout. Sir, are you okay? Are you all right? If I get no response from that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check for a pulse and I'm going to simultaneously open the airway. The patient has a pulse. Now I'm going to look for signs of breathing, listen for signs of breathing. If the patient is breathing but still has a problem with the airway, then I'm going to attempt to place an oropharyngeal airway. Now, I'm going to measure off from the tip of the ear to the outside of the mouth. Once I do that, then I can place the airway. I want to hyperextend the patient's head as long as we know he doesn't have a neck injury. And there are actually two ways. And the first way is to place the airway in until you meet the hard palate, then as you are placing the airway in, rotate and place the airway down. The second way involves a tongue blade and I can push the tongue down and I can go straight in with the airway, just like the curvature. But the idea is, is that we pull the tongue up so that the airway falls against the back of the throat, keeping the tongue from falling against the back of the throat, and that will occlude the airway. Now, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to shake and shout, check for a pulse, look, listen, and feel, and now my patient is not breathing. If my patient is not breathing and has a pulse, I want to start with the bag valve mask device. 
I want to put the bag valve mask device over the bridge of the nose and over the mouth. Then I'm going to pull up the chin. The reason I pull up the chin is because the tongue is attached to the lower jaw. And when I pull up the lower jaw, then there goes the tongue with it and it keeps the airway open. Now I'm going to ventilate twice, once, twice. Now you'll note that I'm using a CE technique. I am grasping the mask with my forefinger and thumb and then I am going to pull up on the chin with my other three fingers while pushing down the mask on the patient's face. Once I get two ventilations in, then I'm going to place the airway. All right, I want to go measure off my airway and I want to go in upside down, rotate as I meet hard palate, then I will continue bag valve masking the patient. Once every five seconds. Now, I will also want to make sure that I connect my oxygen to my bag valve so that my patient is getting 100% oxygen.